Hello, our topic today is the zodiac sign Virgo. First, I'm going to go over the usual interpretation of Virgo, which is that Virgo is fussy and picky and critical and gets on people's nerves because it's always picking at everything very detailed oriented. Virgo loves to categorize things, keep everything perfectly organized, alphabetize your recipes, everything's got to be in perfect order, neat and fastidious, and Virgo is also service oriented. Virgo is inclined to be humble with a desire more to serve than to shine on the front stage. So Virgo doesn't want to be the center of attention. He wants to be of service. And service is often a, well, not a background activity, but it's not front and center. So they just want to take care of things, make things work technically oriented. And so the idea is that Virgo, uh, by Virgo I mean people with many planets in Virgo, not just Sun in Virgo, maybe Virgo rising, two or three other planets in Virgo, maybe Sun, Moon, and another inner planet in Virgo, lots of Virgo. Um, so these people with a lot of Virgo will be analysts, accountants, secretaries, and specialists. So that's the usual idea of Virgo, this technical, detail-oriented person, very picky, very fussy, uh, very organized. Okay, that's the idea. Is it true? Well, we have a way to find out if it's true. In addition to doing, uh, looking at the birth charts of friends and family and clients, if, if you're a practicing astrologer, there's something called extreme case sampling, which is very powerful. Here I have two links to videos that go into a lot of technical detail about what, about why extreme case sampling is so powerful. And we have a formula, and here's the formula given below, but the formula doesn't matter that much. Because the idea is that if you have tons of Virgo in your chart, you should exhibit the qualities of Virgo. And here they are, out of over 20,000 people with recorded birth times. These are the strongest Virgos. These are the, the ones that I could find some biographical information for. Usually I can find biographical information uh, for about a third of the people. So there's actually, I think, over 22,000. So there's seven or 8,000 people with recorded birth times and significant amount of biographical information. And out of those thousands of people, the strongest Virgo is a fellow by the name of Anton Mauv, who was a painter. Uh, next is William Friedkin and Willy Burgle and Rajiv Gandhi. I hope I'm saying Willy Burgle's name correctly. Okay, so these are the extreme Virgos. Uh, first thing we notice, we're not seeing the theme of being analysts, technical people. We have a painter, we have a film director, an actor, a prime minister. So that's uh, a little bit surprising. It doesn't surprise me, however, uh, because I use a slightly different idea of the, of the zodiac signs. And one thing that I do is I don't believe that the zodiac signs are primarily a list of personality characteristics or even primarily an archetype. I think it's a process, and the process manifests as various possible archetypes. So the, the zodiac signs are like seasons. They're phases uh, in, a, in a cycle. And the phase of Virgo is about bringing the underlying natural order and structure into our lives. So I'm suggesting this. That Virgo is not primarily an analyst, a detailed person, that is the typical behavior and personality traits that develop from someone who is in a stage of evolution, a stage of growth in this lifetime of seeking the underlying natural order and structure in our lives. I say and structure into our lives, I should say in our lives. Well, anyway, the idea is that there is a structure. There are patterns of nature. Of course there are. Uh, especially nowadays with the with the discoveries of a fractal uh, basis of, of much of nature, there you might say are algorithms, patterns, designs, organization, structure to the way life is. And Virgo has this instinctive sense, not a conscious sense, not a uh, an intellectually stated philosophy, but this instinctive sense that things should be in tune with the natural order. 
If they're not, they're wrong. <laughs> so Virgo has this tendency to have a right and a wrong. You're right when you when things are in proper order and they're wrong when they're not. So many of the traits of Virgo of being fussy, analytical, detailed, these are common traits. They're very typical. They don't always happen, but they are manifestations of this desire to get in tune, to see, to be aware of, to appreciate, and be in tune with the natural order. Okay, so Virgo strives to make us appreciate this inherent beautiful order and to improve our lives by living in tune with the natural order. Uh, so a zodiac sign, whether it's Virgo or any, any other sign, does not tell us what a person does, but how they do it. So that's the key, one of the key ideas I have about uh, zodiac signs. I didn't uh, come up with this idea independently. I read about it from Dane Rudyard and other astrologers who said that zodiac signs are stages, they're phases. And I think that these astrologers are correct. Um, so the Virgo does things with an, with an eye to the inherent natural order and design, and they want to make our lives work properly and correctly by being in alignment with this order. So Virgo is giving a kind of a Platonic view of the world. By Platonic, I mean a philosophy of Plato that, there, that there's a, a perfect thought forms, perfect designs hidden behind the, the, the physical world that we see. And Virgo um, is considered to be an earth sign, and it is earthy in the sense that it brings into concrete manifestation pure ideas, and Virgo is ruled by Mercury. So very curiously and amazingly, the concepts of Virgo handed down from ancient astrology that Virgo is an earth sign ruled by Mercury makes a lot of sense because Virgo brings these pure ideas into manifestation. It's a kind of virgin birth. The, the the purity of these Platonic ideas, these pure ideas, this this reality uh, organization system behind things becomes manifest, and that's the real virgin birth. Um, now, to give you a more concrete idea, more direct and straightforward, less abstract idea of what I'm talking about, I'm going to show you the chart of Christiane Alfonso. She is not one of the strongest Virgos in the entire database, but I'm going to, uh, but she does have strong Virgo. She has Sun, Venus, and Ascendant in Virgo. We have other people even more Virgo. She also has two outer planets. She was born in a generation with Uranus and Pluto in Virgo. And she's an actress uh, popular in a series that was on television called Days of Our Lives. And she developed a great interest in jewelry and she developed her own line of jewelry. She loves jewelry. She's fascinated by it. She she used to have her own jewelry made for her on stage. People loved her jewelry. So this is just an aspect of her life that she loves jewelry. Now, we don't usually think of jewelry as being Virgoian, of being the quality of Virgo. Jewelry is extremely Virgoian. How is it Virgoian? Because normally the stone is cut. When we say jewelry, it means cut precious stones. The stones are pure, clear, and then they're cut to precision with an order, a geometry, um, a crystal clarity. Th these are Virgoian traits of seeing the beauty of a mathematical world, a geometric world, a natural world within nature, and to have that pure crystal presence tangible, which is what jewelry is. Jewelry is like the virgin birth, if you can follow my kind of uh, 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 symbolic thinking here. Metaphorical is what I'm looking for. Metaphorical thinking, that, the, that the, the pure idea precipitates or manifests in the jewelry. So this idea that Virgo is bringing an underlying pure order, geometry, um, organization into manifestation helps us appreciate other ways that Virgo expresses itself. It's not always just picky, fussy, and categorizing. It also shows up in ways like this. And we will see this with the, uh, the people who have the strongest Virgo, um, which are these four people, Anton Mauve, William Friedkin, Willie Burgle, 
and Rajiv Gandhi, who have even more Virgo than Christian Alfonso. So let's look at Anton Mauve. Who is he? Okay, Anton Mauve, okay, let's look at his chart. He's a painter. Uh, here he is. So he has, he's a triple Virgo, sun, moon, and ascendant in Virgo, Venus rising almost exactly in Virgo, with Mercury and Jupiter also in Virgo. Wow, incredible amount of Virgo. The most Virgo of, of seven or 8,000 people. Um, and the Venus rising in Virgo should be really conspicuous uh, in his life. He, he must be, if, if Virgo has any meaning at all, he must be a clear expression of Virgo energy. So is he? This is our way to really find out if astrology works. Well, he was a painter. He was a cousin-in-law of uh, Vincent van Gogh. And for a short time, he was a mentor of van Gogh. His paintings are realistic, but in a subtle way reveal that what we see is very likely more beautiful than we realized. And I think I might have this website open. Oh, well, good, I do. I was afraid I accidentally closed it. Here's some paintings by Anton Mauve. The clarity, the simplicity, the directness. Um, they are realistic paintings, but in the realism, he captures the light and color. He's, he was famous for his ability to capture color. It shows that what we see in everyday life, it's realistic. Um, it's realism, but the realism reveals a color, a beauty, a magnificence in a subtle way that we often overlook. So in a way, he's showing us that even a plain landscape like this has uh, a beauty, the light. The, it's almost, you might say, magical or alluring. The way he will catch uh, light in different ways, um, brighter light or cloudy days like this. Here's another image. Um, so realistic painting that captures the colors and beauty and flow and textures of life. Um, this is a kind of Virgoian expression of revealing how beautiful creation is and a sense of a perfection or elegance or beauty behind it. Um, so he paints common everyday landscapes of the, of the people um, and he captures the different moods and colors very realistic but in its realism the colors and the catching of the light is so vibrant so sweet that it opens our eyes to what nature really is and this is a theme we see with Virgo is realism and in the realism how it is more beautiful perfect uh, and and um, captivating than we otherwise tend to see. Uh, so his paintings are realistic, but in a subtle way reveal that what we see is more beautiful than we may have realized. His technical expertise and the way he captures light and color brings out the inherent, the inherent exquisite beauty and order of things. He is a Virgoian painter. So, um, Virgo does not tell us what a person does, but how they do it. If someone is a painter, and he's a painter, he's going to paint in a Virgoian style, which means to capture the inherent beauty and elegance behind what is. And by capturing light and color uh, and texture the way he does, he reveals it to us. Uh, and by the way, he has a complete breakdown in his relationship with Van Gogh. Van Gogh, while he was being mentored by uh, Anton Mauve, had a relationship with a pregnant prostitute which um, obviously was um, socially unacceptable for, for, for many people. Um, and this probably was perceived by Mauve as out of alignment with the inherent beautiful order of nature, exclamation point. So Virgo does tend to have a sense of right and wrong and what is the proper order and pure and perfect way to manifest the hidden world, a hidden world of perfect order in nature. Um, and Van Gogh with his wild crazy lifestyle was completely out of the uh, world of someone like Anton Mauve who was so Virgoian. Now, 
If we think that Virgo is primarily picky, fussy, analytical, that is not, from what I can see in all the biographies I've read, what Anton Mauve is primarily. What he is primarily is a painter with great technical ability who brings out the colors, the light, the, the realism in such a pure way that our eyes are opened that what we see in everyday life is more beautiful, more elegant, uh, more captivating than we might have uh, ever noticed before. It is a Virgoian way of painting. Um, okay, William Friedkin, he is a, a director, producer, uh, screenwriter, and from Wikipedia, it says, let's look at Friedkin's uh, chart for a second. Um, oh, I don't have him in here. Well, we can rectify that real fast. Let's just go ahead and put him in here. Friedkin, William Friedkin. Okay, so here is his chart. He has Mercury and Venus rising in Virgo. Wow. And his sun and moon. So he's a triple Virgo also, sun, moon, and ascendant. He's also born a generation with Neptune and Virgo. And, by the way, this is the... Um, part of fortune using the ancient formula and the part of spirit um, using the ancient formula. There's an ancient and modern formula for fortune and spirit. Anyway, if you're wondering what those things are. Anyway, he's got sun, moon, and ascendant in Virgo. Uh, Mercury and Venus rising in Virgo. Neptune also in Virgo. So how is he an extreme Virgo? Well, when I read the biographies about him, it didn't say much about him being picky and fussy. He's not an analyst. But here's an interesting section in the biography in Wikipedia about him. Friedkin did not want to be known as an art house director, but rather for action and serious drama through stories about an America upended by crime, hypocrisy, the occult, and amorality, all of which he mounted up into his films to reflect what was going on in America that was changing in the wake of Vietnam, the sexual revolution, and Watergate. So here we have it again. The emphasis on proper order, proper organization, that that the crime, the hypocrisy, the occult, the lack of morality, all this wild and loose living in the modern age, the sexual revolution, where is proper order, organization? This is more than just being, you might say, prudish Virgo. What we need to do in astrology is to realize how each zodiac sign is making a contribution, whether it makes the contribution in the best way, the, the most balanced way uh, or not is another issue, but Virgo is making the contribution to life of putting us in alignment with a natural order. And, and sometimes the person with a lot of Virgo is not getting a perfect idea of what the, the real order is or how it should manifest, so there, there can be problems, but understanding it in this way that Virgo is trying to align us, to appreciate and open us up to this hidden, beautiful world behind the manifest world, um, and all of this sloppiness and hypocrisy and crime and so on is working against it, and that's his interest. So he is a film producer, he's a movie producer, he's a director, he's a screenwriter, and he's going to take a Virgoian approach to it to expose what is immoral and put us on the right track. Uh, and all, also, by the way, in this bottom note, I mentioned he was not a perfectionist as a student in high school, and he did not strive for good grades. So the Virgo quality, or whatever zodiac sign you're talking about, does not necessarily e exhibit itself in every manifestation that you expect. And if you think about the zodiac sign as a stage in evolution, as a stage, as as a a stage in an overall process that Virgo is bringing into the material world, the, the a divine order, we could say, it brings the divine order into the manifest world, um, then we realize you don't, that's not necessarily going to make you a perfectionist in your studies, right? If you think of Virgo as being perfectionist, then why isn't he a perfectionist? Something's wrong. But if we think of it as somebody who's trying to bring the divine order into into manifest life, well, maybe being a perfect student isn't isn't helping with that. Um, is the way Friedkin might have been thinking about it when he was in high school. 
Okay, and I believe the zodiac signs actually operate at, you might say, a super conscious kind of level. Um, it's, it's a process that works almost in another dimension, you can say. So people aren't always conscious of it. Um, I use the word divine order to, to give the feeling of, of what's going on with Virgo. But somebody with Virgo could have no sense of con- consciously of a divine order. They might, they might, might be an atheist. Um, so it's not what's consciously going on, but it's an underlying process within the person's life. Okay. Third person with huge amount of Virgo is actor Willie Burgle. Um, now, is he a perfectionist? Is he funny? Uh, fussy, not funny. <laughs> is he a perfectionist? Is he fussy? There isn't much said in the, in the biographies about that. Um, does he try to bring the divine order, uh, or some sense of a, of a structure and a design and a right way of living into life? That, I think we can make a much stronger argument, is true. Um, I'll read this section from Wikipedia. Um, okay, he's German. So, um, Ein Mann will nach Deutschland, roughly translated, a German wants to get to Germany or a German wants to go home. Okay, so this is a, a movie. Portrays a German engineer living in South America who hears in 1914 of war in Europe, realizing his obligation for his fatherland. He sets out for Europe, join, joined by a German comrade. The journey to German... Germany involves physical hardships, treacherous terrain, and hostile seas, obstacles faced by patriots who have only one thought to return home to Germany to help a fatherland under attack. So here, he, his, uh, one of his important roles, and he, and he continues to have similar roles in other movies, of protect, going back to the fatherland to restore proper order. It's under attack. It's being dissolved. Here is Virgo in action. Let's bring the divine order, the proper order, our heritage. Let it, let's not let it fall apart. Let's undergo any hardship we have to to bring that divine order back. So as a, as if you think of Virgo this way, it makes sense. He's not necessarily fussy, picky, etc., but he's bringing the divine order as he understands it. Now you may say, well, the German government in 1914 was not divine order. That's not the point. It's his perception is that it was a a wonderful order, a wonderful system. Um, everything has flaws. Nothing is divinely pure and perfect. But the idea is that that system was much better than was being torn apart and rendered asunder and everything lost. Um, to preserve that, and we know that Germany uh, produced some of the greatest music and art and science, um, you know, through the 1800s. So going back to protect that is a Virgo activity. So I'm giving you a new view of Virgo. Okay, to continue with this um, paragraph here, the film spoke of the kind of German values that were emphasized later in Nazi Germany. So he made this in during World War One, when World War Two comes about. The, the Nazis adopted similar themes, um, obviously more distor- distorted and um, uh, malevolent as well, uh, but this idea of a great Germany. And he continued to make movies through World War II um, that the Nazis approved of. And Joseph Goebbels uh, honored him as one of the great actors, and he, he won a, um, an award as actor of the state. And he, he he was involved in many propaganda films, and uh, and after World War II, he was um, not allowed to act for a certain period of time because of his association with the Nazi movement. Um, so the I again the point being that an order an organization that he saw as being good and pure was being supported and Virgo can do bad things all zodiac signs can do bad things they can do good things they can do bad things um, now here's another quote a noted penchant for portraying straight backed caval- cavalry officers cultured governors aristocratic landowners industrialists and charming bon vivants these are the typical roles that uh, Virgo played and so he's per- portraying correct social order. People living according to proper and correct laws. And sometimes Virgo has an, an interest in elegance, 
uh, sophistication because this is what right living in accordance with uh, the underlying patterns of nature can bring about and the desire for purity. So did he have some sympathy for the Nazis? Uh, what was going on there? To some extent he probably did. Um, and, uh, and, and that reveals another side of Virgo which is it's not always very compassionate um, it'll do what it thinks is a good order and um, sometimes um, overlooks the human qualities in favor of a more abstract sense of, of a pure design. Our last person with strong uh, Virgo is Rajiv Gandhi. Let's look at his chart for a moment. This is one of the uh, Gandhis in the Gandhi family. He was Prime Minister of India for I think four or five years. He has Jupiter and Moon rising in Virgo, Venus also in Virgo, and Mercury and Mars in Virgo. Lots and lots of Virgo. And if you look at Virgo as being fussy and picky and analytical, and that's what you're expecting, it's hard to see it in Gandhi. Now, I want to mention that at astro.com, um, there's, which is an astrological website, of course, um, there's a biography, and it mentions some common Virgo traits of him being fussy when he was working for the airlines and as an airline pilot before his uh, family asked him to to serve in government. Uh, I didn't read about these Virgo traits anywhere else. Maybe this is an attempt by astrologers to justify uh, and and give um, evidence that that astrology really works. But I couldn't find other than on an astrology site any description of him as being fussy, particular, perfectionist, all of these things. Um, probably he was to some extent, but not enough that it's the most pronounced and obvious thing about him. So what was Gandhi like? Well, I, here are two different views of him, one positive and one negative, from two different websites. The first one says Gandhi reduced taxes and tariffs, m built a closer relationship to the United States, greater distance from Russia, helped build computer technology in India. Uh, when there were brutal attacks by Sikh militants in the Punjab province, he stopped it. Um, he brought on police chief K.P.S. Gill. Uh, he, you know, he was appointed by Gandhi and, and Gill stopped that uh, militant activity. Gill was criticized for being brutal, but he did succeed in stopping the militant activity. So this is a positive view of Gandhi. A negative view of Gandhi from this website says he was a dull speaker, he was not distinguished academically, he was not inspiring, he was a technocrat who did little to help the poor, he received kickbacks for purchase of guns from a Swedish company, Bofors. Uh, this was not proven to be true, but it was a major scandal. Um, some strong evidence that was true, but not, not proven to be true. Um, and it caused him, everybody said, agrees, it caused him not, not to win the next election because he looked, looked, looked very suspicious, involved in a possible scandal. <clears throat> Excuse me. And by the way, the guns that were purchased were of good quality. There's no question about that. But the question is um, an inside deal to get it done where he got some payment to, to close the deal and award the contract to the Swedish company. Now, who's right? What went on? I think there's probably truth to both of these. The Virgo approach is to get proper order. Order is what's important. Virgo, contrary to what's often said about Virgo, is often not compassionate. Um, it'll, it'll just do what's right. Even It's tough love. It'll, it'll, it'll just enforce the law. Um, there are natural hierarchies. So Virgo is not necessarily going to be compassionate uh, for the poor. This idea that Virgo is service-oriented gives this feeling, and also that Virgo is feminine, that it wants to help, it wants to serve. The service is secondary to aligning people to the proper order. Um, and you can make an argument that there are natural hierarchies, and if people are in that low level of the hierarchy, and they're serving that uh, that purpose in their lives, 
that's not so bad. I mean, I don't agree with that. Um, I think everybody should develop their full potential and shouldn't be uh, held back. But I'm saying Virgo isn't necessarily going to be a defender and a promoter and an advocate for helping the disadvantaged. And apparently Gandhi was not. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, he, um, you know, was rather mild. He was not uh, distinguished in a lot of ways. It's probably true. Virgo isn't necessarily highly distinguished or uh, anything like that. It just wants to bring proper order into society. And as far as the the purchase of guns, um, he was successful in getting very good guns that worked very well for the for the military. Um, he got the work done. Was there some kind of kickback? You know, I don't know, but there could have been. Um, probably there often is with these things. Um, but his his goal is to. Uh, get the job done, get things in proper organization, get the military what they need, uh, and put the society in tune with with a proper um, uh, proper laws, proper structure a, as he understands it. Um, so Gandhi is not clearly an extreme Virgo person, but if we view him as somebody who just wants to make things right according to the proper way things should be without trying to push it without having strong leadership qualities without having as he has clearly no strong motivation to be in politics he's kind of dragged into it he just wants things to be done properly um you could make a reasonably strong argument that that's what he attempted to do and that was his frame of reference he was not interested in in being a leader and changing and um, any of that. He just wanted to have things work properly as they should uh, and that's what he did. Okay, so conclusions. First conclusion is that Virgo does not consistently give the traits that we often say it does. It's not consistently picky, fussy, critical, etc. Um, and it, it does not indicate what a person does but how they do it. And what Virgo does is this, Virgo gives an instinctive drive to see the natural order, the patterns and designs of nature, to appreciate that natural order, to see it as become part of our lives. Virgo is inclined to see a right and a wrong, and to enforce what it sees as a right approach, even if it feels harsh or insensitive to some other people. Uh, Virgo often is detail-oriented, and often also inclined to appreciate elegance, like fine embroidery or refined designs, that are beautiful, but not ostentatious. It's not trying to show off, it's just trying to reveal the elegance uh, behind nature. Uh, so that's what I think Virgo is doing. We can make a reasonably good argument that this interpretation of Virgo fits our extreme Virgo people, the four extreme Virgo people. I think it's very difficult to make a good argument that those four extreme Virgos are fussier, pickier, more analytical than the average people. I, I don't think they are, but I do think we can see the ways in which they reveal the the hidden beauty and elegance uh, in life and try to bring that uh, into awareness and to have our lives align properly with that proper order and proper laws and proper organization. Those themes are very strong uh, for at least several um, I think they're strong for, for Bergel, um, for, uh, what's his name, Friedkin, what's, where's our four guys here? Uh, I think the, the Virgo theme, as I'm describing it, is very clear for Friedkin and Bergel. I think you can make a good argument that you see it in Anton Mauve. Um, maybe Rajiv Gandhi is the least obvious, um, of the four, but overall I think this fits pretty well with this alternative interpretation of Virgo and does not fit as well with the usual interpretation of Virgo. So there you have it, my friends, another zodiac sign where viewing the zodiac sign as a phase in an evolutionary process rather than primarily as an archetype, but primarily as a phase in an evolutionary process that can 
develop certain archetypes out of that phase uh, gives us a better understanding of what the zodiac sign really is. Well, thank you very much for listening, my friends. God bless. Namaste.